let's now try to solve shortest path problem. See, you are manufacturing sand and you're supplying the sand to different construction sites across Hyderabad, India. And you have um, all these big developers such as Rajapushpa, Aparna, Lansom, My Home, Ramki, ACC, you know, RDC, so on and so forth. So these are your different customers to whom you supply sand. But then you want to start at your head office, which is near Rajapushpa. And you want to end with my home, which is the destination. Right? But you're pressing for time. You're pressing for time. And you just want to go ahead and do the inspection at different construction sites, whether the supply that you promise has reached them or not. And for this, you want to know what is the shortest path which is possible. Of course, you might in the interim miss out a few of your sites, but you're constrained with time. Given the time constraints, you will have to, you know, in the shortest time possible, reach to your destination. This could be one kind of a business problem, okay, for quickly inspecting. Or you are at this location and, uh, you know, you have your supply here and your demand. Supply is given as minus one and demand as one because you need to start here and reach here. Okay, so there are two things that you're considering here. One is the driving time. How much time does it take to reach from one location to another? And the Finnick rating also. Usually in highways, it makes more sense. However, we just introduce this concept of Finnick rating. Say, a lot of travelers travel and then they would have told you that, do you know what, this route is amazing. This route has a lot of greenery. Um, this uh, route has a lot of concrete uh, blocks. This route is very good in that way. Based on that, say you have given the rating. And uh, 1 until 11 are uh, provided here. You start from 1, you want to reach 11. Which route do I take so that I reach the destination in the minimum time possible? You have 3 hours. I mean, from destination 1 until 3, it takes 3 hours. And for Cynic, you're giving four points. And you're putting plus zero everywhere because, you know, there is no stopping over there. Kind of, I mean, it's not needed for you to reach that location. Plus one is <clears throat> the destination. Minus one is the source. Okay. Given this business problem, we have one and 11 nodes, which are these locations. And then you need to proceed further with your calculation. I mean, it's just putting everything in this particular, uh, you know, format and then job done. You can proceed further. However, you will have same what you will have to supply your uh, you need to identify your decision variables. Right. Whether you're going to travel in that route or not. Simple. That's destination. If you're going to travel in that route, you'll have a one. If you're not traveling in that route, you'll have a zero. Your objective is to minimize that time taken. And obviously you have constraints. The way we have seen constraints for transshipment problems, similar kind of, uh, you know, um, constraints exist here as well. So let's solve them. Okay, so these are pretty simple, the variable cells and the total <clears throat> total duration is equal to I7 until I24. And then you multiply it with actually D7 until D24, depending on the route that you take. Okay. And here, the scenic route also from J7 until J24 and then D7 until D24, whether you are taking that route or not. And here, the net flow is something like this. Sum if you have to 
explore further on what the stomach function in Excel does. G7 until G24. You know, if any of these values is equal to L7, which is the first node, and then the formula continues. So you, you can just explore on that front. That's the formula which we have applied throughout. And then you can go to you know, your solver. And um, there are multiple things that I wish to explain here. One is, what do you want to minimize? Say you want to minimize the total time. So you have to change the object. By changing what? By changing the values. These, whether you are going to travel in that route or not. And then you have constraints. Constraints are that, you know, all these values that you have here should be greater than or equal to, say, zero. Okay, you add them. And then another constraint could be all these values should be exactly equal to your constraints. Done. Okay, we will use complex linear programming problem. We will solve it. Job done. So, you will have to travel from 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 4, then from 4 to 7, then from 7 to 10, and then from 10 to 11. That's the best route because it takes only 11.5 hours. And the scenic score is 15. If you are only interested in the most scenic route, then again, you'll have to change the solver. Okay, your objective now changes to this, and you'll have to maximize. Remaining things will remain the same. But when you solve it, let's see what happens to these values. Yep, yeah. these values, root has changed, obviously. And 35 is a scenic root. And 15.9 hours is what it's going to take. By increasing the duration by roughly four and a half hours, you would increase the scenic score by 20. If you want to use both, if you want to optimize both, then how would you do that? I'll once again go to solver, say this is your objective, you want to minimize that. But then you can put a constraint saying that this number should be at least, say, 25. So you're adding a constraint. Now let's look at these values. What will happen? You might get some decimals and it might not make sense, but let's try out. Yeah, you're getting 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and all that. One means you go in that route. Zero means you do not go. So these numbers do not make sense. So if those numbers do not make sense, you need to add another constraint. And this time you would say that, hey, all these numbers, I want to restrict it and make them binary. Now, when you try solving this, you get to see. Okay. So by increasing the duration by two hours uh, earlier, if you wanted to get the shortest route, it was uh, saying that 11.5 hours is what it takes. But if you slightly uh, you know, compromise and increase your duration by two hours, you get the most scenic route right, of 29. So in that way, multiple objectives also can be solved. Thank you. And in the subsequent lectures, we will talk about a few other problems which are